So let's bring the discussion back to power laws. Reminder that a power law distribution is of this form. It says that the probability or probability density for x uh, to take on a particular value is given by uh, this function. It's a power law because it's the variable x raised to some power. So power laws, as we've seen, have a lot of the action concentrated on small values. This is the histogram for the Moby Dick word frequencies again. Um, but it has this long tail. It decays. But some very large values um, do happen, rarely but not unthinkably often. Here are some other views of similar power laws. <clears throat> Here this is going out to 100. And so these large values are rare, but not unthinkably rare. And so if we were to sample this a million times, we would see some very, very large numbers and lots and lots of very small ones. And so just like with the St. Petersburg game, that can mean that sometimes averages don't exist. So here's uh, the result for power laws. So if alpha is less than or equal to minus uh, to two, then the average does not exist, just like we saw for the St. Petersburg game. So let me show you um, an example of that, and then I'll talk about this stuff down here. So let's choose an alpha less than 1.2. I'm going to choose 1. Point, uh, excuse me, less than 2. I'll choose alpha of 1.5. And I'm going to do just like I did for the St. Petersburg game. But instead of tossing a coin, I'm going to sample from this distribution. And I wrote a, wrote a program to do this, because that's not something that's easy to do with, with coins. So I'm just sampling from this distribution. And I might want to know, well, what's the average value if I, if I sample a bunch? So, well, this shape is kind of looking familiar. Uh, first couple of values are small, then a huge one. Then it goes down, and so on. So the average is jumping all over. What happens if I go out to 100 instead of 20? So this was this peak here. And it looks like it's smoothing out, but nope. Something very dramatic happens at around 43, 44. And then we see some spikes here. Maybe it's settling down to between 4 and 500. And uh, nope. Again, it looks like it's settling down, but then a huge, crazy thing up to 20,000 at around 600. Is it settling down? Nope. Another huge event here. This goes up to, sorry, the scale was truncated, I guess 100,000. Anyway, it's huge. By the way, um, Another sort of interesting thing to think about is, let me get this one back so you can see the scale. So if we were tracking this, this was some sort of data, price returns or um, who knows what, and we saw this huge spike here at 43 or 44, we might say, what happened? There must have been some sort of outside influence. The system, whatever it is, never could have done this crazy thing on its own. And well. Power laws can do that. Every now and again, we get these very rare events that can skew averages and make averages that don't exist. So if we see something like this in some data, it doesn't necessarily mean it was from outside the system. It could be a property of the system itself. OK, so that's alpha is 1.5. There, the average does not exist. If alpha is less than 3, then the standard deviation of x does not exist. And let me say briefly what standard deviation is. Here is its definition, and it's defined as follows. x with a bar over it is the average x. This says, figure out how far each data point is from the average, square that, add those up, average, and take the square root. So it's the average of the square of the distances um, from, from the mean. And uh, the main way to think about it is it's a measure of the average departure from the mean. If something has a very small standard deviation, all the values are closely clustered, closely packed around the mean. But if we have a large standard deviation, then they're spread out. And what's interesting, I think, is that for alphas between 2 and 3, which turn out to be pretty common, we can have a well-defined average. So things look sort of normal, but the standard deviation in this case goes infinite. So let me show you some plots that illustrate that. 
So first, let's just think about the average. So here, I'm sampling from this power law, this distribution, with an alpha of 2.5. And the average jumps up. This sort of looks, looks familiar, like we've seen along, uh, all along, but it does seem to be settling down. But we know we can't trust going out to 20. So let's see. So here we go out to 100. And this is still the familiar spiky shape, but maybe a little bit less spiky than before. Let's see. Here I'm going out to 1,000. And it does seem to be approaching 3, although there's this blip here. But you've learned to be suspicious now when I say it's approaching something. I suspect that it's not. Here's one more plot out to 10,000. And here, well, gee, it really does seem to be approaching 3. And it turns out that it is. And one can show this using a little bit of calculus. One doesn't need to use programs. Um, but if I were to go out to 100,000 and a million, this would smooth out and start to look kind of like that fair coin, that the average really doesn't change that much after a while. In fact, that, and the changes in the average get smaller and smaller. But when describing a situation, the average is only part of the story. We also need to think about how much variation there is about the average. And that's what the standard deviation tells us. So this has a well-defined average of 3. But what about the variation around 3? Is that well-defined? Well, it turns out that it's not. So here I'm plotting now not the average, but the standard deviation. How much do the values tend to fluctuate around the mean? And we're seeing these spikes, big spikes, bigger than before. That's out to 100. Here's out to 1,000. Again, spike, decay, another spike, and decay. What if I go out to 10,000? Again, it looks like it's settling down this huge spike here. And then it decays some. But it turns out that if I keep plotting this, I'm going to keep seeing these spikes. And the standard deviation is going to become infinite in the same way that the average was infinite for the St. Petersburg game. So we would say that the standard deviation doesn't exist, or it becomes infinite. So for this case, where we have, where is it? Sorry, I'm swamped in maths. All right, here. So for this case, it looks safe, well behaved. Let's say, all right, a lot of fluctuations, but an average of three, no big deal. Well, I'd be pretty careful. Because yes, there's a mean of 3, but the average fluctuations about 3 are infinite in the sense that they're, they're, um, they're not defined. The average doesn't exist. So all of this is to say that power laws are very different distributions than those that we're used to. We've seen that they're scale-free and self-similar. We've seen that they have long tails. And one of the consequences of these long tails, remember a long tail means that some very large events um, still occur, not often, but not astronomically unlikely, um, that these long tails mean that sometimes averages and sometimes standard deviations don't exist. So if we're describing, uh, if we're using power laws to describe phenomena, power laws are a good, a good description for those phenomena, we're going to have to think about them differently. We can't always assume that averages exist, and we can't always assume that standard deviations exist. So what are the practical implications of this? Well, in brief, I think they vary from field to field. And the, issue isn't, the issues aren't fully settled. And so these are things we'll return to in the next unit and throughout the rest of the course.